missile launchers in Belarus, military tents in Crimea, and additional artillery units in Western Russia. Images taken in early February show how Moscow continued to deploy its armed forces to surround Ukraine. After several months of military buildup, this map shows where Russian resources were stationed to the north, south, and east of the country, all despite diplomatic efforts from the U.S. and NATO to de-escalate tensions. Moscow has repeatedly denied planning to attack Ukraine, but armed forces experts in the U.S. have been skeptical. This is not a buildup for an exercise. This is a buildup for military use. The type of equipment deployed and the presence of fighter aircraft, usually the last units to arrive prior to combat, indicated that the Russian army was in position for a potential attack, according to analysts. Combination of artillery, mortar rifle infantry, armor, logistical support. Russia's movements have been particularly visible in the west of the country, Belarus and Crimea, suggesting that the army would have the capability to stage attacks from multiple locations. Nearly a year ago, Moscow was already building up troops and equipment in Crimea, an area in the south of Ukraine which it annexed in 2014. In April, it positioned military forces in the area for an exercise, many of whom never left. Satellite imagery captured five Russian military training areas in the region. It showed the camps expanded further in recent weeks. This is one of them, Nova Zirne, in September last year, and again in December. In these images, we can see equipment such as trucks lined up. And just over a month later, the camp, seen in this image, expanded with a new section of tents. What you're seeing in the image suggests that personnel have either arrived or about to arrive. So it suggests a more advanced level of preparations in the Russian military. That's Michael Kaufman, a specialist on the Russian military at the research organization CNA Corp. Kaufman said evidence of troops arriving at camps could also be seen in these images from Western Russia in late January. He said the appearance of dark spots indicate that snow is melting on the tents because heaters are being used inside of them. In early February, military analysts watching Russian movements reported that the camp had started to empty out to leave for positions closer to Ukraine's border. Moscow says it's moved the equipment and troops in the region for training drills because it feels threatened by NATO and the West. Russian President Vladimir Putin accused the Western military alliance of fueling anti-Russian sentiment on its borders as Ukraine sought membership of the bloc. The stationing units for exercise in winter weather is unusual, according to Philip Carber, a former Pentagon official who's currently the president of a policy research organization. Uh, everything's more lethal. Everything's more terrible. You know, you're out there in sub-zero weather. The fact that they're bringing this massive stuff in, uh, in a very uncomfortable conditions of, of, of winter is also a very unusual sign. Carber, who's traveled several times to the front lines in Ukraine in the past, said the images showed there was more equipment stationed in Western Russia than what's normally been observed for routine testing. When you're going into combat, you're carrying at least for that unit, at least three days worth of ammunition for full out combat. That takes a lot of trucks. And all of a sudden in these, in these photographs, the trucks are there. The buildup of weapons has also been photographed in other regions outside of Russia's borders. Military analysts said that suggests if an attack were to take place, it could be multi-directional, meaning the offensive could happen from different locations simultaneously, potentially close to some of Ukraine's major cities. It's very likely that in the event of a Russian military operation, that there would be an attack along multiple axes to Kiev from Belarus, into northeastern Ukraine, from western military districts, and from the very south in Crimea. These images show stocks of Russian SS-26 Iskander missiles in Belarus, according to Carber and Kaufman. They have a range of around 400 kilometers and can be used with nuclear warheads. Russian fighter jets were also pictured in Belarus ahead of military drills. Military experts point out that air forces are normally the last to arrive in an area before military action to support ground troops. But even if movements on the ground have increased, analysts in the U.S. and other Western countries say they don't know if Putin made a final decision to attack. Moscow has an array of options, including capturing a limited area or using its current presence to negotiate and attain more influence and political power in Ukraine. Putin demands guarantees that NATO won't give membership to Ukraine, 
and that the alliance reduces its activities in countries close to Russia. But it's a risky calculus, as Ukraine and Western countries also increase their firepower in preparation for a potential crisis. Is there, are there costs associated with mobilization and all that stuff with, without using it? Absolutely. But it would be the cheapest, if, if he could get uh, us and Ukraine to, to concede, that's the cheapest victory he ever had.